What's up, guys? It's the Quits here to finally bring you Fairy Tale Chapter 329 review. To be honest, guys, I was not expecting a chapter this week, considering that it's Golden Week of Japan. Everyone gets a week off work, stuff like that. Maybe Hero is making up for missing last week's chapter, and this is pretty much just a really late release. Either way, I'm happy. I really enjoyed this chapter of Fairy Tale. It's a good chapter. So, let's get to the key points, guys, alright? I'm pretty excited about this. Chapter came out Tuesday. Still fanboying. You'll see why at the end of the at the end of the review. Key points: Natsu versus Future Rogue, Atlas Flame Dragon versus Fairy Tail, uh, Sting and Rogue versus uh, Stardust Dragon. Back to Natsu and Rogue, Natsu and Future Rogue, Natsu and Future Rogue. Correction: Natsu and Future Rogue. And then in game, <laughs> the seven dragons. <clears throat> so let's get the starter, right? Shall we? I think we should. So we we see this. We we start off the chapter. I'm sorry, I'm a little stuttery right now. Just really excited about this chapter of fairy tale. Um, we see Natsu standing on top of a building, holding onto a flagpole. Future Rogue then says, "Oh, you're still alive." Oh well, kill him. Kill him, dragon. So the dragon pretty much destroys the building Natsu's on. But, you know, missed the flagpole. Good luck, Natsu. You know, very good luck, Natsu. Missed the flagpole. Natsu jumps off the flagpole, covering his, uh, flames and hands. I, I'm guessing this is his, uh, his, uh, wing slash to the fire dragon. But just with one hand. He, he tries to punch Future Rogue. And Future Rogue being evasive, he uses his Shadow Magic, his Shadow Dragon Slaying Magic, to evade the hit. So, Natsu pretty much just phases through him. But then he hits the dragon, and the dragon screams. And now it's very, it's very key right there. It's a very key panel right there. You'll see later, you'll, you'll understand later in the chapter. Um... Not to, uh, future, not not to, future rogue says, look at the city, not to, look at the town. Not to looks at the town and he sees all the dragons pretty much just destroying everything. Everything in sight. Uh, alright guys, for that key point, he gets a, he gets a good for the panel of the dragon screaming after not attack. He gets a good. Alright. Next key point. The Hellfire Atlas versus Fairy Tail. Or is this, um, telling everyone to, you know, get back into your stance. Let's reorganize our stance. Let's make a new formation of attack. So I'm like, okay. Let's make a new formation of attack. Elfman states, uh, this dragon's just as bad as Acnologia. Gray, laying down in some rubble, or sitting back down in some rubble, says, you know what? This dragon's not as bad as Acnologia. And you know, no dragon's as bad as Acnologia. Pretty sure we can put that together. The Atlas, or Atlas Dragon, or I like to call him Health Flame Atlas, states, uh, you still survived after my attack. You must be mages. Master Macro starts growing. His, uh, Titan form. Like how he used against Acnologia. Says we are not just mages, we are mages connected by bonds of like a family. So, a little Nakama speech. Didn't really mind. I didn't mind that. I, I really didn't. But then Makarov does the stupid thing and punches Atlas. Um, just gonna say this, okay, guys. You punch, you punch steel, your hands gonna hurt. You punch spikes, your hands might bleed. You punch razors, your hands still might bleed. You punch ice, your hands might get cold. You punch water, your water, I mean, your hands are gonna get wet. I mean, you know, if you punch fire, you're gonna get burned. That's pretty much exactly what happened to Makarov's hand. He got burned. Um. Ma Mako? Mako, I think? Uh, Romeo's dad says, no way. The master's attack isn't working. Um, 
Oh, of course it's not working. He's not a Dragon Slayer. That's what this whole thing is emphasizing, that you have to be a Dragon Slayer. No, in fact, go that you have to be a Dragon Slayer to hurt the dragons, like the panel in uh, Key Point 1, where Natsu hits the dragon and Future Rogue's on, and it screams. Because Natsu's a Dragon Slayer. The dragon even states, states himself, You cannot defeat me if you're human. If you're human, just give up. You can't defeat me. He's pretty much saying, bring a Dragon Slayer. Only a Dragon Slayer can defeat me. So yeah, I mean, there you go. Overall, it, it get this part gets a good as well because it explains the panel from the first key point, which is not to hitting the dragon. So it gets a good. All right, it gets a good. Next key point, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, it gets a really good because we we learn more about stinging rogues dragons, um, what happened with them, and stuff like that. All right, guys, so. Stinging Rogue versus Stardust Dragon. Um, a little small panel, you know. Uh, we see Sting and Rogue, and Rogue tells Lector and Frosh to, you know, get out of here, get out of here, go hide, protect yourselves. Just, just get out of here, please. We don't want you to get hurt. Because you know they care for friends, um, or you know Rogue cares more about his friends now than he did before. Then. Rufus states, if I recall, my memory states that when Sting and Rogue were kids, they uh, claimed to kill the dragons. And here, here's what I really liked about this this little flashback of a uh, of little Sting and Wylogia. Wylogia tells Sting to kill him. Sting refuses. Wise Logia then says a dragon slayer is more powerful when it's, when he's drenched in the blood of the dragon who taught him, or something around something like that, you know, to become a true dragon slayer. Sting still refuses. So overall, you know, Wise Logia did convince Sting to kill him. Um. <sighs> Oh, sorry guys, a little tired, but I'm gonna keep on with the review. Um, then we go see Rogue, and Rogue, all he says is, Skydream was ill, and I just assisted in his death. So Rogue, so Rogue killed an, um, an already almost, an already dying dragon, and Sting killed a dragon that wanted him to kill him. So, you know, that's very good. It, it makes a lot more sense than, than, you know, two little kids going, going in a full, a full fight with two dragons at full force. A lot more sense. So, thank you, Hero, for that. And then Orga comes out of nowhere with this one panel saying, I don't care. Use your dragon slaying magic on it. Just hurry. Just do it. Do it. Use your dragon slaying magic on it. So I was like, okay. I was like, thanks for breaking the moment, Orga. But it's fine, you know, it's fine. Alright, we go back to Sting and Rogue. Sting says, I've never expected a dragon to be this strong. A dragon fighting at full force. So that pretty much tells me that Wise Logia did not fight full force when he fought young Sting. He, he was clearly holding back his strength a lot in order for Sting to kill him. So, yeah. Um, Rogue says I want to protect my friends, and here's the interesting, here's the interesting thing, guys. Sting's on the right panel. Rogue's on the left panel, and under them is Future Rogue. You split Future Rogue in half, and then you push those two sides apart. It matches up. Uh, future Rogue on bottom, Rogue on top, Sting on top, and then, you know, the part of Sting that's still in Future Rogue on bottom. So I really like that. I, I liked seeing that, so it was good. So overall, that key point, 
it's a very good, like I said before. Um, let's get to the third key point, and that's back to Natsu and Future Rogue. They're still fighting. They're still going at it. Um, Natsu hits the dragon again. The dragon screams. And I did notice something about a uh, Future Rogue. He's using his shadows to stand on the dragon. While Natsu has to cling to the dragon scales, Future Rogue is using his shadows to, like, stand on the dragon. So I really did like that. And here's when I found this part interesting. Future Rogue tells uh, Natsu, um, if you remember, seven years from now, dragons will rule the earth. But not the dragons from the gates. Only one dragon rules the earth. That dragon is the king of dragons. That dragon is Acnologia. He then goes on, he then goes on to state, Future Rogue does, um, there's no mages to fight Acnologia. Everyone lives in fear every day. Here's where I invented the dragon manipulation magic. It did not work on Acnologia. That's why I decided to come back in the past. That's, I'm pretty sure that's the reason why. The only way to defeat a dragon is with other dragons. And with these dragons, I'll be able to do that. Um, Natsu says, is that all? <sighs> no, of course it's not all. Future Rogue's a, you know, a, a really good villain. He states, if I am able to kill Acnologia, I will become the king of the dragons. I will rule the world. And then he goes on to state, by the smell of it, seven dragons escaped. That's all I need, seven dragons to take over the world. And, Natsu, alright. Here it is, Natsu. Here's where I started to feel a little proud of Natsu. Strange, right? I I don't like Natsu. I usually don't like the main protagonist of the series. Well, Luffy is a, an exception to that. I, I like Luffy. But Ichigo, Naruto, and, and Natsu? Not so much. I'm sorry. That, that's just my honest opinion, guys. Natsu yells, can all of you hear me? And you know, the mages look up, like, oh, that's Natsu speaking. We have to listen to him. We have to stop fighting the dragons and listen to what Natsu's saying. Natsu then yells, dragon slaying magic can defeat dragons. He says, let's go. Let's start our dragon hunt. There are seven dragons and seven dragon slayers. And he yells that, like, with passion. And I was like, oh, they did Natsu remember who I said was coming back a few a few chapters ago? Did, did he remember? That's the only reason why I was proud of Natsu, because he remembered. Future Rogue says, seven dragon slayers, did you, or did I hit you that hard? Can you not count? Can you not count? And... Here's where Natsu says, can you hear it? Can you hear it, guys? Can you hear the music playing? Can you hear it? Can you hear the awesomeness? The, the most anticipated return, in my opinion, of the best Dragon Slayer in the series. Can you hear it? I'm asking, can you? So, so this this part right now is it's getting great. A very great, very good. We're taking over to Lahar and Drum Ball. Drum Ball's sweating. He's saying, I got him. I got him. Alright. I want to go retrieve him. Lahar says, I'm sorry for making you go that far. And then we see a panel. A nose down panel. Saying, yeah. I can hear it. Can you hear it, guys? 
I, I hope he can hear the music. I hope he can. It's... I, I really hope he can hear it. And John Baldwin says, we, we needed your assistance. And then the last page of the chapter, we see Cobra, the seventh Dragon Slayer. Can you hear it, guys? I've calmed my voice down. I've fanboyed. I have fanboyed ever since Tuesday. I read this chapter at least three times a day. Can you hear it? I can hear it. I can still, I can hear it. I can hear the music. Every time I get to the next to last page, and the last page, Dokoryo no Cobra starts playing in my head. It, it plays. The fact that Hiro Mashima decided now was the best time to bring Cobra back is, is like, it, it really, it really touched me because everyone wanted Cobra back. A huge majority of the fairy tale fan base wanted Cobra back. They didn't like the idea of bringing a new Dragon Slayer in. If Hiro Mashima would have brought a new Dragon Slayer in, he would have continued trolling us. No, he brings back Cobra. Cobra. Again, I'm going to say it again. In my honest opinion, he's the best Dragon Slayer. And, and guys, th this really changes things. I mean, Cobra's fresh. Cobra is, is literally the, like next to Laxus, is the strongest Dragon Slayer there. And he's fresh. He hasn't fought. And here's the thing that, that really caught my eye. His left eye still has a scar on it. So either Hiro Mashima had, had a say in the reborn Odeon Seas, uh, filler arc. That was, you know, in the Key of the Scarry, the Starry Night filler arc. Either he had a say in that, or he took that the idea of Cobra losing his his eye eyesight to to hear his uh, his friend Kinana, and he made a cannon. Or if he did have a say in that filler arc, then Cobra everything that happened with Cobra was canon. Because let's face it, guys, you don't bring a guild like Gorazion sees and again in my honest opinion. The best out of the three dark guilds back and make it just filler. You have to make it somewhat canon. So I, I really appreciate that. Hands down to you, Hiro. You've done a, a, an amazing job turning this series around from chapter 321 and 322. I, sorry for bringing those chapters up, guys, but you've done a great job. Um, yeah, guys, a, a really good chapter, a fairy tale. I, I loved it. One of my favorite chapters. Um, not only because you know Cobra came back, well, that's a huge plus for me, but the fact that we got more story on on Wise Logia and Skydrum. Um, Hiro Mashima made me a little proud of Natsu for not forgetting Cobra. And. Yeah, guys, I, I think that's it for my review. Um, I would give it a basic fat, but you guys, you guys probably already know what I'm gonna give it. Everything, uh, badassness, attention level, satisfaction, interest level, they're all going to be seven plus. Confusion meter, two, not very confusing. Um, fan service. Well, Cobra came back. Cobra has a huge fan base. So, a nine. A nine on Cobra. Um, predictability. Not very predictable. I did predict Cobra to come back in a few chapters, and he's back. So, 
yeah, I mean, a very quick basic tap review, but you guys can pretty much guess what what I'm going to give it. And out of five stars, this gets a four. This this chapter gets a four. So, so yeah, guys, I hope you heard the music. I sure did. Um, that's it for my review. A very, very good chapter of Fairy Tale. This is the Quincy. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe. Check the links down below for our Facebook fan page and mine and the Shin Megami's personal Twitter pages. Um, add it to your likes. Give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you later, guys. All right? Take care. And again, sorry for the late review and sorry for just having a cobra moment. I I needed a cobra moment. I mean, yeah. Oh, one more thing before I go, I'm going to give you guys my power ranking on the Dragon Slayers. So here we go. Number one, Cobra, of course. Two, Laxus. Three, Gajil. Four, Natsu. Five, Sting. Six, Rogue. And seven, Windy. So that's my that's my power ranking on the Dragon Slayers. Cobra, Laxus, Gajil, Natsu, Sting, Rogue, Windy. So, again guys, thank you for watching, I'm signing out, adios otakus.